Hi everyone, welcome. So what I want to do in this video is sort of go through a number of problems, um, example problems that were actually came from your homework. So we're just going to do exercises. Um, and you're welcome to watch this video simply either one to sort of test your test your work to see how you did it and or use this uh, and if this video, you don't need this video don't watch it um, but I know that a lot of people are probably having difficulty simply because they're not used to building proofs and again I think it's practice 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 so I just want to go through a number of the exercises in Appia um, I don't know if I'll go through all of them uh, simply because it may take too long uh, but I will go through a lot of them. So let me sort of pull up the Applia system. Let's see, where is it? Okay. So here's Applia. And we're going to see, I'm just going to, I have all the problems here. And I'm just going to go through and sort of do these problems with you. So let's, uh, let's take a little screenshot of this. Um, so here's the first problem. Okay. Whoops. Um, sorry. Hopefully I can edit that out. Okay. <laughs> so let's go through some exercise problems here. Um, let's start with this problem here. Okay. Um, and, you know, of course, normally, typically, the Apple is writing the conclusion here for you to sort of look through. Um, but let's write it out here. Not X or C. 2 is not x or c then j then i third line not x or j conclusion j then i okay so let's take a look at this problem what can we do here well notice right that this and this are the same thing which means that, that we can actually use a modus ponens because remember the modus ponens says if you have P then Q and you have P you can conclude Q so this thing right here is our P and this right here is going to be our Q which means we can conclude Q so line 4 here is going to be J then I lines 1 and 3 modus ponens right so that's actually a fairly simple problem this thing right here was well just meant to sort of throw you off you didn't need this at all. The whole point of this problem is to get you to see what I what I've been calling that substitution instance where that it functions as your P and this is your P and this is your Q. So that's the first problem. Not too difficult, but uh, I mean it's not too difficult when you see me do it. Uh, but if you've never done this before, uh, these problems can be difficult, right? So let's take a look at this problem here. Um, you know what? Maybe I can just go like this. Um, one sec here. Sorry, guys. Uh, maybe I can just, you know what? I know what I can do. Instead of using Microsoft Word, let me just use this thing right here. All right, there we go. Let's make that bigger. Let's scoot our sort of screen over. Um, I don't know why it does that. Anyway, whatever. Okay, so here we have this problem. Not C, we have not C, not J, and then we have C, then X, or I, right, then J. Now, notice here, I have a negation C, but I can't do anything with it because these brackets are here. Actually, you know what? I think that's too small. <laughs> um, sorry, I hate wasting your guys' time with these videos while I'm trying to fiddle with the technology. Uh, but let's let's just use Microsoft Word, actually. Um, okay. Okay, here we go. I think that's a little easier for you guys to see. So I'll just keep using the Microsoft Word. All right, so you see here, what am I supposed to do with this problem? You can see it, I have sort of difficulty here because how am I supposed to uh, make sense of this, right? Because I have, I have this big ugly equation, but I can't get it. But look, the conclusion here, the conclusion I'm looking for is not C then X or I. I do have C then X or I right here, I need a negation in front of right here, but wait a second, I have a not J and I have a J here. Can't I use the rule of modus tollens, where it says if you have P then Q, but you don't have Q, you must not have P, right? 
where again, this here is going to be my Q, this is my P, and this is my not Q, therefore I don't have this. So really, this is only one more line. Line four here is going to be not C then X or I, right? And that's lines two and three modus tollens, right? You can see these first problems, they just want to get you to see the substitution instances. Um, and in fact, in the Aplia system here, pretty much all of these first problems are like that. So let's skip down here. You can see they're going to do another one. This one's going to be a hypothetical syllogism. Um, and you, let's see here. Can we see? Notice the D and J, right? So I have a hypothetical syllogism that says if I have this, I can sort of skip my way to this here. I always think of that game when your kids you ever play shoots and ladders or something snakes and slides or something like that it's sort of like this is a, a quick ladder up to this because this becomes your sort of middle term connection so that's pretty obvious let me see if i can scroll down here because all these rules these first problems are just getting you to sort of see these sorts of um things so let's scoot down here to natural deduction practice this is where it actually gets sort of interesting so let's do this problem here um, well, here you know, I'll just put it to the side here and just rewrite it. Okay, so here's the first problem. Here's this problem, which is line one is we have J or K then J. Line two is we have not J. And the conclusion we're looking for here is not K. Okay, now you can see here. I, the, whenever you see a disjunction here and a negation, you should think the disjunctive syllogism rule, right? Disjunctive syllogism says if I have P or Q and I don't have P, I can conclude Q, right? So this here becomes my P and my not P, which means I can use the disjunctive syllogism rule here to say line 3 is going to be K, then J, right? Um, and that's lines 1 and 2, modus ponens. I'm sorry, mode of uh, disjunctive syllogism, okay? But remember, my conclusion is to get this not K. I have a K here. Wait a second. I could reuse line two, right? And you set up a modus tollens, right? The modus tollens looks like this. P, then Q, not Q, whoops, not Q, then you must not have P. And here's what I have, right? Take a look, right? Um, I have the not J here. And I have a J here, which basically is this right here. So I can conclude my P, which is in this case is the K. So that means line four is going to be, I'm sorry, not K, right? And that's lines two, or actually three and two, modus tollens, right? And that's the conclusion there, okay? So that's that problem, right? Uh, and notice here, one of the things that was tricky, maybe for some of you, was that we can reuse a line, right? Yes, <laughs> you can reuse lines, right? So just because I used this for the first line doesn't mean I couldn't use it again. Okay, so let's try another problem here. And I'm just going through the Aplia homeworks here. Um, some of you who are just watching these videos online, because I'm going to make this available for anyone else who wants to watch. Um, may not have Aplia, but they're just practice problems regardless. So let's see here. Let's do another one. Okay. So here's another problem. Line one is going to be not J. Line two is going to be I, then H, then not J, then I. And then line three here is not J, then I, then H. And my conclusion I'm looking for here is I. Okay, so let's take a look at this. Now, the first thing I can see is since I have the not J, I can use the not J to unlock the I, then H using the modus ponens, right? Remember, modus ponens says if P, then Q, you have P, you can conclude Q. So that means line four here is going to be I, then H, and that's lines 1 and 3, modus ponens. Okay, now I have I, then H. Notice my I, then H right here. 
I can, looks like I need another modus ponens and I can unlock this. And, you know, I don't even know how to get I at this point, but I think, well, you can probably see it actually. Um, but I won't go to say how. So that means I can get not J, then I. Again, I use the modus ponens. This gives me the key to unlock this, right? And this is what I've written right here. So this is lines two and four, modus ponens. Okay, and then line six. Okay, now I have my goal is to get I, right? And now hopefully you can see what to do. I'm going to use modus ponens because look, I have the not J right here. That'll let me unlock it right here and get that I. So my conclusion here is going to be I, right? And that's lines one and five, modus ponens. So this, this example problem just wants you to do modus ponens over and over and over again. We'll ultimately see to, to see the different sorts of um, substitution instances that are possible. Okay, let me do one more problem here. Let me do the hardest problem here at the end. Uh, let's do this. Yeah, let's do this problem right here. Uh, you typically what they do on these, these exercises is they make the last problem the most difficult, which makes sense. I mean, uh, so it's going to be not J then N. Two is going to be N then not S. Three is not J then not S then not O. Four is going to be O or, ooh, a big ugly thing here, um, not J then N then not S, then O. Close brackets. The conclusion I'm looking for is the negation N. Okay. Okay, so let's see what we can do here at this problem. Now, the first thing, I need the negation N. I say always start by looking at the conclusion. You can see the negation N here. Well, where is my N? I've got an N here. I've got an N here. And I've got an end here. And of course, this whole thing is right here. So you can see maybe if I could get this line by itself, I could do it. Because remember, I cannot use a modus ponens with line four, not right now, because this bracket means that I can't use a modus ponens. Because uh, remember, the modus ponens applies to the entire line as a rule of inference. So what can I do? Well, you know what I see right here is this end. I see a hypothetical syllogism right here. So let's just write that. And, I, and I'll be frank with you, right now while I'm doing this problem, I don't see the solution, not immediately, but if I see something, do it, right? Uh, when, I, when I used to live in New York, right, the, the, the city always says, if you see something, say something. Well, in logic, if you see something, do it. Um, that's sort of the way I think about it. So this is going to be not J, then not S, using the hypothetical syllogism, which says if you have P, then Q, Q, then R, you can just conclude P then R, right? Um, so that's lines one and two, hypothetical syllogism. And just to sort of maybe clear for those people who maybe don't quite see what I just did, this becomes my P, right? And this becomes my Q, right? And then the R here becomes, the, and the negation S becomes my R. So you, hopefully you can see here, exactly how I did that problem. It has the same form format. Whoops. Sorry, my calendar keeps going off. Okay, so now I have not negation J then not S. Ah, notice this line here, right? That is the same as this, right? So that means I can get negation O. So that's line six is going to be negation O. And I'm using lines five and three in modus ponens because the modus ponens here is sort of, um, it's the key that allows me to unlock the negation O. So um, that means lines three and five, modus ponens, okay? Now that I have the negation O, now look at this ugly problem here, right? Um, I can immediately see the disjunctive syllogism here. Remember the rule for the disjunctive syllogism says that if I have P or Q and I don't have P, I can conclude that I have Q. So uh, that means that this is my P, I'm sorry, this is my P and this is my not P, then I must have this. So that means line seven here is gonna be 
not j, then n, then not s, then o. Okay, and then you notice I didn't need to put the brackets here because um, now I know I, it's clear from the parentheses that this is the main operator. Okay, and remember always don't forget to write your explanation. That's lines four and six, disjunctive syllogism. Okay, so what do we do next? Well, let's see, can I get this by itself? Notice, I do, let's see here. Uh, I don't have, I have the not S. Let's see here, I'm trying to see what to do. Because uh, you see if I have the not J or N, then N, do I have that? Yes, I do. I have not J then N, which means I can use modus ponens to unlock this. So let's do that. That means I'm going to get not S then O, right? And that's line 1 and 7, modus ponens. The modus ponens, you sort of, this becomes sort of like addition uh, in the sense, in mathematics, in the sense that it's such an important, modus ponens is the easiest, but it's also the most critical. You're going to use it over and over again. Whenever you see a conditional, think maybe I need a modus ponens here. So we have not S then O. Okay, what, what can I do next? Remember, my goal is to get negation N. So that means at some point I'm going to need to do a negation N. Let's see, what can I do? Oh, notice here. I don't have, I have a negation O, which means I could get negation, negation S using modus tollens, right? Uh, this is, this problem uses sort of all of them. So the modus tollens here is going to be, if you have P then Q, you don't have Q, you must not have P. So let's do that problem because notice here, right? Let me use a different color. I have my O right, my Q here. So and I have the negation, which means I can do this, so I can conclude the P but negated. So let's do that. So that means I'm gonna get not, not, S. I just add a negation on in front of it, not a problem, right? Negation first, that's line six and eight, modus tollens, okay? Now, ultimately, we'll see when we get to the rules of replacement, the, a double negation can be simplified as just S, but it doesn't matter at this point because now let's take a look at our lines here. I need to get negation N, but look, I have a negation S here. It's already highlighted green, but so then let's sort of, it's right here. Can't I just use modus tollens again? Because I've got the extra negation, in, which would give me negation N. So that's line 10. It's going to be negation N, right? And that's line 2 and 9 modus tollens okay and that's the proof for that problem you can see that that was a, that was a fairly long problem it took us 10 lines but it wasn't too difficult I hope you can see how to do that right it just it required us to use disjunctive syllogism modus ponens hypothetical syllogism modus tollens really all of the first five, five rules of the um, rules of implication so um, so let's do another problem here Let's see what else we can get here. Instead, um, for those of you who are in the course using the, the Applia, that was from the Applia section 7.1. Let's take a look at section 7.2, Rules of Implication 2. Uh, let me pull that up here. Um, let's do a couple of those problems here. Um, a couple practice problems. I'm going to skip the problems where they just want you to see how to do the substitution instances. So let's do another one. And again, I haven't practiced any of these ahead of time. So, and I want you to know, I even get stuck on these problems. And when I do get stuck, I'll probably pause the video. Um, so anyone can get stuck on these problems. These ones are not too difficult for me since I've taught this course many times. But, um, but don't feel bad. When I first started learning logic here, I always felt the same way you did, I'm sure. Um, just sort of feel... Like, you have no idea what you're doing, and you're utterly frustrated. It just looks like, you know, random symbols, right? Uh, especially, uh, you know, you have family members watching you do these, and you're, they're thinking, what the heck are you doing, right? But there's a certain amount of satisfaction, I think, because as you get to do these problems, and you do them better and better, you're going to feel pride, right, in what you're doing here, because 
Um, go to, you know, I remember as a logic student myself going to coffee shops doing logic problems and sort of having hidden pride in the fact that all the people watching me who'd walk by had no idea what I was doing. I felt very smart, even though I didn't think I really was. But anyway, that's enough talking. Okay, let's take a look at this problem. First thing you can see is I have an X and I have an X then this thing. I immediately think modus ponens over here. So that means I can say not C and J. Lines one and three modus ponens, right? Um, I can simplify this to get, remember my goal is to get not I. Okay, not a problem. So five here, let's simplify. Remember the rule of simplification says that if I have P and Q, I can always just simplify it to P. So I can just drop that the Q here. And in this case, that's the J. So that means that I get not C, right? That's line four simplification. Okay, now that I don't have the C, I can do a disjunctive syllogism here, right? Which is going to be, well, I won't rewrite it since I just did it for you. Uh, so line six here, and if, if you need to pause the video and double check your rules so that way you see what I'm doing. Um, so that means I'm going to get not I and X, right? Using lines two and five. Disjunctive syllogism, line seven. I need the not I, you can see I can just do another simplification. That's not I, line six, simplification. So that problem really wasn't too difficult. Uh, where it is difficult is if you not if you can't think of these rules off the top of your head. Again, the more you do these, the easier they get. So just keep practicing. Um, I encourage you to practice more problems than you're actually assigned by your professors. Um, or if you're in my class, do, do more practice problems than I assign. Because ultimately, I mean, that's what's going to help you do well in terms of these. So let's take a look at the next practice problem here. That's in the, the problem here. Okay, that's it. Looks like this line one is not y, two is not y or z, then not u. Line three is not y or v, then k. Line four. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, the conclusion then is K and not U. So let's see if we can do the proof here. What could our line four be? Okay, well, well, notice immediately I need not K and they're right here. I need this, right? I could use a modus ponens here to unlock this and eventually um, conjoin these using the rule of conjunction. All I have is the not Y to start with, but wait a second. Can't I use that rule of addition? Remember, the rule of addition says that if I have P, I can always just add anything, right? I can add, well, I can just add Q here or anything, right? So let's just do that. Uh, that seems pretty simple here. So that means it's going to be not Y and Z, right? What am I going to add? Well, I'm going to add this thing uh, because I want to get this. So that's going to be line one addition. And I can already see here that I need to add this in order to get this too. So let's just do that as well um, to make it easy. So that's going to be not Y or V. Notice I can add anything. If I wanted, I could add Z. I could add a Z and a T. I can really add anything I want. Of course, that's not going to help me. I'm going to add only what helps me. So that's line one addition again. I did a different addition that time. And now that I have these, can't I just use the modus ponenses? What is the plural of modus ponens? The modus pona, poni? <laughs> okay, so, because take a look here, right? So that'll allow me to unlock this. So line six here is gonna be not you, right? Lines two and four, modus ponens. And then take a look here. I can use the modus ponens again to get the K. So let's do that. That's going to be K. Whoop. That's going to be line K. And that's going to be line 3 and 5. Modus ponens again. Right? And now that I have these together, I can conjoin them pretty easy. So line 8 here is going to be K and not U. Right? That's 6 and 7 conjunction. Okay? So there's the proof for that one. I hope the highlighting colors helps. Okay. Let's do another one. I'm just doing these problems over and over so that way you can see how to do them. Let me see if I can do one that's a little more difficult here. 
Um, let's do. Here's what we'll do: two more pro practice problems here. The two last ones, which are typically the most difficult. Here, I'll scroll down here. Um, all right. So this problem is one. We have X or H and not U. Two is not X. Three is not X or G. Then H then not I. Line four here is going to be H or S then x, then t, and the conclusion I'm looking for is t or not i. Okay, what can I do with this problem, right? Okay, well, you can see I could, I need the t, where's my t? Okay, I got a t over here, which means I'm gonna have to do something with this, probably need a, a modus ponens to get this thing, and then I'll need an x to get this, or something like this, uh, or, and, or I could get a not I, which is one here. You know, I'm not exactly sure what to do. If I could get T by itself, I could always just add the I. That's something I could do. So let's see if we can just get that T by itself. Um, but you can see here I need an H. Uh, I'm not exactly sure what to do. Um, so let's see if we can do something here. Mm, notice not X or G. Well, I could unlock this. So let's do that. If I let line five here is I'm going to do not X or G. And again, I'm using that same rule of addition to add this little guy right here. Okay. So that's going to be, but I'm, but I'm using, this is my goal, but I'm using line two here. So um, that's line two um, addition. Let's look at number six here. Once I get this, I can unlock this using modus ponens. So that means I've got H then not I, lines five and three, modus ponens, where again, this functions as my P, and this functions as my Q. That's why I was able to conclude this thing right here. Okay, now I have a not I, okay. Let's see, I don't have an H though. Hmm, what can we do here? Not exactly sure. Let's see here. They're not always so. I could simplify this. Notice, I could simplify this. Let's do that. Let's simplify line one to just x or h, right? So that is line one simplification. Now that I've simplified it, notice I have this not x again. Can't I use the disjunctive syllogism here? I could, right? Or the or maybe, yeah, that's P then Q. Oh, I'm sorry, P or Q, not P. You can conclude Q, right? I have X and not X, so that means line eight here is going to be H, line two and seven. Disjunctive syllogism. Okay. Now that I've got the H, wait a second. Can I do this right here? Notice I could add the S again. So let's do that. So line nine is going to be H or S. It's going to be H or S. And that's line eight um, addition. Okay, once I've added this, now I can use a modus ponens right here in order to unlock this thing. So X then T. So that means line 10 is going to be X then T line four and nine, uh, modus ponens. And again, if it helps you, especially when you're first learning these, maybe get some highlighters and highlight these. I don't know if, this, if that helps you or not, but if it does, do it. Um, get some highlighters and that maybe, so you can help see those substitution instances better. Okay, let's see here. Let me make this a little smaller so we can see everything. Okay, so here's, I've done 10 lines here. My goal is to get T or not I. Okay, I finally got the X here, right? 
Uh, but I need X by itself to get T. I don't have the X by itself, do I? I have a not X. That doesn't help me at all, right? Because if I said not X to not T, that's a fallacy, right? That's not going to work. Um, hmm. What can we do? Uh, some of you probably see it before I do. Um... Uh, Let's see here. My goal. What about the not I? Where's my not I's? I have an H. Well, no. Let's see. Hmm. Oh, I, okay. I think I see what we need to do. Notice I need a T or not I. I have a T here, right? I have a T here and I have a not I here, and they both have conjunctions. What if I? Con I'm sorry, conditionals. If I can join these, maybe I can set up a constructive dilemma. Okay, so I think that's the way to go here. So that means I'm going to conjoin lines 10 and 6. Now, what order? I'm going to put 10 first. So that's going to be x, then t, and h, then not i. Okay, and that's lines 6 and 10. Conjunction. Now that I've conjoined them, that means I have an. Notice line, line seven here says if I have x or h, right? The constructive dilemma says that if I have a setup like this and I have x or h, that means I must either have t. I can conclude I have t or not i, right? So that line twelve here is going to be t, or not i, right? That's lines. 7 and 11, constructive dilemma, and that's my conclusion, right? Because here it is. Okay, and that's the proof. You can see that was a bit of a long problem there. I sort of, uh, I even sort of had to sort of think, I had to stop for a second and say, hmm, what to do? Uh, but I had to, and especially in these problems, think to yourself, um, Oh, haven't used the constructive dilemma. Maybe that's what they want me to do, right? If you don't see what to do, go back and take a look at your rules um, and sort of say, what can I use here? So let's do one last problem here, and then I'll conclude the video here because we've been going for over a half hour, uh, which is quite a few problems. Um, so let's do one more. Oh, we're out of space. Sure, let's just move that down. Okay, let's do our problem right here. Okay, let me make it a little bit bigger. Okay, here we go. So let's do this problem. This is the last practice problem from the Applia. So this one I know is going to be difficult, um, or as difficult as they probably get for this section. That's not x. Line 2 is, right, not x or t. Um, hmm, uh oh, why is this thing here? Okay, sorry about that. Um, then, not, uh, sometimes I use the Microsoft Word here and it just completely erases everything I write and I have no idea why. Um, okay, so line. Three. It gets fairly sensitive for some reason. Maybe if I make it a little smaller, it'll help. Okay, sorry about that, fight, guys. Um, and the next one here is not not x or s. Then not h then x, line 4 is going to be not x or g, hmm, I am going to break this computer if it keeps doing this, then not h or not h, really, okay. 
Now, especially coming off the heel, and the conclusion I'm looking at here is I or not you. Okay. So, first thing to notice here is take a look here. What well, immediately when I thought this, especially coming after that last problem, is if I can get this thing by itself, this in look here, this is a disjunction. I may need to do another constructive dilemma. We'll see if that's what's required or not. Um, so, but I, I bet it is. Um, let's see, is there anything else we can spot? I always say take a little time and just inspect your problem because that means if I could get this by itself. Because um, take a look here. Well, no, that's I. Make sure I wrote it down right. Yep. Not exactly sure what to do, but notice here I have the not x. If I do the additions, I can get these things. So let's just do that. Um, so line five here, let's do an addition. It should be not x or t. What is wrong here? Okay, that's line one addition. So line six here is going to be not x or s. That's line one addition again, right? And the reason I did that again is because, right, these things are right here, which means I could use modus ponens to unlock both of these. So I'm going to do that too. Line seven and eight. And that's going to be not H, then I. And that's lines two and five modus ponens. Now one thing, what, okay, one thing you should all know is that a lot of you are going to be tempted to just do the problems and, and then after you finish the problem to write the explanations. Don't do that. Um, please, always, always good form is to make sure you write the explanations on the side. So that way when other people look at your problem, they know how you're reasoning. That it's very, very, very clear what your reasoning procedure is. Um, I'm going to do the same thing here. So that's going to be not H Then X, um, that's line six and three, modus ponens. Okay. Um, yeah, after this, after this is over, I'm gonna break this computer because it's driving me nuts. So let's see, what could line nine be? What do we have? What's still available for us to do? Now that I have this sorts of things, hmm. I could set up a constructive dilemma. No, I can't. Because remember, there's not H or H. Notice here, if I can join these together. Wait a sec. Uh, no. Because I'm thinking if I could get a constructive dilemma. Wait a second. I can do a modus ponens here too, can I? Let's do that. Let's get that thing out of the way. I should have seen that originally. Um, so that's going to be not X or G, and that's going to be line one addition again. All right, for some reason I didn't see that. Um, so that means line 10 here is going to be this, not H, or uh, not H. Okay, good. And that's lines nine and four modus ponens. Okay. Now, now I can do, I have the I and the not you. Cause I keep wanting, I feel like I need to do a constructive dilemma here. Um, but I need a U. How do I get the I, I need, which means Notice there is no I, there is no U here, which means the negation U, I must just add that. So maybe my goal is to get the I by itself. Okay, oh, I think I see how to do the problem. So let's do this here. Number 11 here is going to be, I'm going to conjoin these two propositions. So that's going to be not H, then I, and... What? Why is it doing that? Okay. Um, and then that's not H, um, then X. 
and I've conjoined 7 and 8, so that's 7 and 8 conjunction, right? And now since I have not H or not H, that's obviously a constructive dilemma. So line 12 here is going to be I or X, right? Mm hmm. Um, Mm, I think I made a little mistake here, but that's all right. It's not a big one. That's lines 10 and 11. Constructive dilemma. Okay. Now, there's a rule here. It's a rule of replacement. I should have actually switched these around into not H, then X, A, and not H, then I. Um, there's a rule we haven't covered, or we're covering a rule of replacement called the commutation rule, which lets us switch, swap sides here. So I'm going to swap sides. I'm going to make this an X or I, like that. I'm going to swap that, and that's rule, that's going to be line 12, commutation. Um, and that's a rule of replacement, um, commutativity. Um, so I'm going to switch these, and now that I've switched them, notice all the way back up here, my first line I have a not X. I can now use a disjunctive syllogism, right? Because if I don't have this, that means I have this. So I'm going to get I here, lines 1 and 13, disjunctive syllogism, okay? And now I have my I. All I have to do is add this. So line 15 is going to be I or not U. That's line 14 addition. Okay, and that's the proof for that problem. That problem was a little bit more, a little yucky, uh, but, or a little, a little gross, a little long, but not too bad, right? I can't, it's so long, I can't get it in the whole sequence here. You can see, um, hmm. okay, I guess I can't show you the whole problem in one screenshot. But you can see here's how we did the problem. We had to do a lot of additions, modus ponens. The constructive dilemma is where I think most people will get maybe sort of hung up on, not because you have to see that before you do it. Um, notice I did the commutation. So you could have done this, probably should have done this in 14 lines instead of 15 um, by just when you can join them, can join them the other way. Uh, but it doesn't matter. Uh, the commutation rule let us fix that. Um, and then finally we got that through addition. So that gives you a sense, at least ultimately, on how to do some of these practice problems. Um, and I hope this is helpful to you, um, at least for those of you who like to see the problems done over and over again, especially if you got stuck on one of those problems. So anyway, I'm going to conclude the video there. Thanks a lot for watching. Um, and again, if you have a problem, send it to me. Maybe we can throw it up on the board if we've got time. Okay, bye.